Kava and welcome to Odonet. And today I want to talk a little bit about the new uh, way you can build out custom widgets in the ArcGIS API for the JavaScript uh, that was just recently released. So we're at 4.2 now. And with 4.2 is a new framework that was introduced that lets you build out your custom widgets uh, in a brand new way separate from how you used to use it in the old version of the API using digits. So this new widget development has a couple things you need to know ahead of time. And that's discussed in these guide pages in the documentation. And basically it's recommended that you use TypeScript to create these widgets. And these widgets also are gonna be using JSX, which if you're not familiar with it, is basically um, what React introduced, where you build out basically writing HTML style inside your JavaScript files. That's not what the browser sees. This actually gets converted to functions and everything that the browser understands perfectly. But it is a very nice way to be able to uh, compose uh, components and compose out the layout uh, in your widgets. So that comes in pretty handy. Um, there's another requirement, no accessor. And basically one of the things that was done with the 4.2 version of the API is uh, more documentation on how to implement the accessor uh, for your own purposes. And we covered that uh, previously. I've covered accessor quite a bit on this channel and on my blog. Um, and there's a lot more documentation to it now, so you can get a full breadth of how powerful the accessor is uh, to use for applications. So I highly recommend you go over this documentation here. They, they basically go over creating a simple Hello World widget, which covers all the basics you would need to know to get started building your own widgets. There's also a really good sample, uh, this recenter widget in here, that covers a lot of nice detail on being able to create a custom widget. So we're gonna go ahead and cover that too today. And what I have here is a simple little application and you can see here in the corner, I've got this um, little chart widget that basically is gonna give me a count of the number of facilities currently visible on the map and give a little chart based on some field information. And if I were to change the extent of my map, I can see the number changes and the chart gets updated as well. So we're updating that based on the um, you know, query in the view and just updating the chart data here. So if we look at application here, this is basically just a uh, you know, my simple index HTML, nothing oh, exciting happening there. Um, I got a configuration file that I built out for this one. Um, you can ignore the web map, I'm not using the web map in this case. But I've got my map options, so I'm bringing in the uh, navigation vector street maps, uh, map view options, which just basically is my center and zoom, and I have this layer infos array, which has the feature layer that I want to draw on. This is the facilities that are being shown on my map and I give it an ID of TRI and we'll see uh, how the IDs come in handy in a second. And I've got my main file and in my main file I'm basically going to bring in my map, my map view in the feature layer. Um, I bring in a couple of custom items in here which I'll talk about right now and I'm just going to go ahead and create my feature layer, add those to my layers, create my map, create my map view and then set those on application store that I currently have. So uh, what I'm doing here, let's go and look at this application store. If you're not familiar with it, um, I've talked about using Accessor for application stores before. This is kind of thing where it's basically your app model um, for your application. It's stuff that uh, if you're familiar with the Redux it's kind of store you would see there, uh, very similar. Uh, same for the Flux architecture. Uh, and a lot of other uh, ways you can build out your apps, use stores as well. Um, I like to use this because I think Accessor works out uh, really nice for this. So I just have a custom type in here uh, for element position. I create a small interface for my store. I don't really need it, uh, but I want to use it just to make sure that I'm not doing anything weird on my store. And also uh, ahead of time, I knew that these this is what I wanted my store to be able to do. Uh, so I can just go ahead and implement that in my store pretty simply. Um, I am using the uh, decorators in here. So there's some decorators provided with the API. This is all covered in the documentation on implementing Accessor. But there's a decorator to go ahead and subclass a class. So you're going to basically let the class know it's being subclass. And then we have this declared method that's going to let me go ahead and extend uh, the Accessor. And I'm just going to implement my interface that I have in here. 
uh, works, which works out pretty well. And then this property here, by just putting the property decorator on a property of my store that extends the accessor, I can automatically uh, go ahead and say that this is gonna be a watchable property now. So that's kind of neat. So every time I could have stuff in my application watching for when the web map gets updated and I can go ahead and do something with it. And I got a small little method here that's just gonna be able to add uh, elements or components or widgets, whatever you want to my UI, uh, it's pretty neat. And then one thing I do here is I'm gonna go and uh, export a instance of the store so that it's always the same instance used in whatever module I have and I have to new it up every time I want to use it. I just export a single instance of that. So that's kind of a way I get a singleton there. All right, so um, let's go ahead and if we come back to this main TS, just see I have this widget init here, um, which I'm pulling in from my widgets core component. So let's look at what that widget on it actually does. Um, so core TS right here. Basically, I'm just bringing in some out of the box widgets, um, bringing in my watch utils. And I'm going to go ahead and when you execute that widget in it, I'm going to go ahead and watch for the view to get updated. And I'm only going to watch once. Actually, let's go and update this too. This, this uh, comes in pretty handy. So const and once is equal to watch utils. Now I can go ahead and I can get rid of watch utils there. I kind of like to use the uh, methods directly uh, if I can and pull them out whenever needed. So I can just say that when once store watch for the view. So I'm only care about the first time it gets updated. When it is updated, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, initialize all my different widgets and put them in these little uh, objects that are going to be uh, match the type I need. That's my store over here. So if I come back to the store, let's see, I've got my UI params type with the element position. And that's what I'm doing here. I have an element and position. So I just create my widgets here and then I'm going to map over them and I'm going to call my store method add to UI. And when you map, you can pass a, a second argument that would be the, um, the context, the scope. Uh, how this gets executed, so uh, nothing, no any weird um, uh, context issues there when I'm running that method, and that's it. That's that's going to add my widgets to my uh, UI for me. Um, so in here, I've got a uh, see, where was it? At? Here we go. I got a custom widget, the summary one. So this is the chart widget itself. So attaching it to the bottom right. So let's go ahead and look at the summary widget. And if you'll notice here, this is a uh, TSX file extension and TSX basically is how you can write uh, JSX in TypeScript just give it that TSX file extension so I'm bringing in these uh, helpers in here um, again go over the doc documentation to uh, read a little bit more about those but then I'm basically bringing in the base widget um, so I'm just bringing that in from the Ezra widgets uh, folder then I have a view model that I wrote we'll look at the view model in a second and I bring in some decorators from uh, the support and then these other um, support modules from the uh, widgets uh, library in here. So I kind of, I really like this idea that uh, the JavaScript API uses to build an object with all the CSS class names and everything. It makes it really easy to just update a class name at the very top of your uh, widget and not to search for different class names you might have manually assigned somewhere in your code, which just comes up pretty nice. I have a couple of helper methods here. Uh, maybe I'll talk about these in a second to give you an idea what they do. And again, I'm just, um, I'm using the accessor uh, helpers, uh, decorator helpers that I have to go ahead and create, extend uh, that widget, which is actually based off the accessor as well. And I have this alias up here. So basically what I'm saying here is that I have a property called count on my widget, but that count is gonna be an alias of the count on my view model. And by adding this renderable uh, property and a renderable decorator, I'm telling the widget that every time this gets updated, that I should run a re-render of my widget as well, right? So those two are gonna be bound together. Um, so I've also got a uh, alias up here for my stats. And actually I should probably add that renderable here as well. 
right, so now I've got uh, talent, same thing. Uh, there's a, on my view model has a property called stats to every time um, that's gonna be bound to this stats here. And whenever this renderable gets this, sorry, whenever my view model stats get updated, uh, it'll update the stats on my widget. And that's gonna go ahead and trigger a render of the widget again. All right, and then I have another property type for my view model. So I need to bring my view model in and I'm gonna type it to the view model, which I've imported over here. I type it to that view model, and then I'm gonna say that it's gonna be um, just, uh, I probably don't, maybe don't need this, I have to double check, but basically I run renderable uh, decorator here, saying that I'm gonna, uh, every time the view model count or the view model stats is updated, that should trigger a render uh, on the page as well. And then I just initialize a new view model when I go ahead and set up so it's initialized right away. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Um, again, there's a, this removes a lot of boilerplate you would typically need to do if you wanted to extend the accessor in regular ES5 JavaScript um, or regular ES6 JavaScript too as well. So uh, make the decorators are a big help here in this case. So now we come down to the render method. So basically in the render method, what I'm gonna do is the stats has some different properties on it um, for the values that I want to create my chart on. And basically I want to have the full height of the chart um, to the nearest tenth. So if uh, the highest value out of all my values was like 125, I want the, um, the max value of 130. And this is gonna let me set the height for my um, container for the chart so that the uh, highest chart isn't hitting the very top. And that's just a little thing. You probably don't need to get that detailed on it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and set the uh, heights as some um, CSS in here. So I'm manually setting the height here with a little multiplier. Um, then I'll show you how this comes in pretty handy uh, in a second when I wanna update my, how I display the chart, all right? So when I'm done with that, here's where all the JSX part comes in. So I have a div here and I've got the classes bound to that CSS uh, object at the top I was doing stuff with. And then I've just got the ability to go ahead and uh, assign these classes. And I found out about this method um, pretty recently. There's a uh, helper method called join um, from the uh, widgets uh, tools you can get that will join um, different class uh, properties together. So I can join the, the column with the red so now it'll have those two classes uh, joined together for me. And I've got the styles. This was stuff I set up over here. So my inline styling of the height uh, as needed in here. And I got a nice little, uh, this is basically a little legend key for the chart so you know what colors mean what. And I'm just gonna return uh, that widget. So that's what these uh, this all values is. Uh, if we looked at earlier when I was talking about getting the maximum value here. So I basically go through and get all the values that I want. And this is a nice little awesome little function here to do that. And then I just round up to the nearest tenth um, in that case. So now for the view model for this, the view model is kind of cool. Uh, again, extending accessor because we're using the view model here to do all that. I have this little object here that I've used for my base um, for the data that I want to send back to my widget. And I have my properties here that I want to watch for. Um, actually, I don't have a values in this case. I wasn't going to use this. So we can take that out. I just got the count and stats the same way I have on my widget. So when I initialize this widget, I want to watch for the view property of the store to get updated. And I only care about when it gets updated once. So I can use the when once of the watch utils to do that. When that happens, I'm going to find a layer by ID of the map using my uh, layer ID of TRI. And remember that was in our configuration that we saw before for my layer infos. So when I find that layer, I'm gonna return that uh, again, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the views when layer view method by passing the layer. And when the layer view is ready, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some watch handles to the layer view to do some stuff. And I have a little error handler that's to care of that. So on my watch layer view method here, it's gonna return a layer view. And when you're working in TypeScript, um, the Esri types are under the namespace of underscore underscore Esri. So you can always bring them in that way uh, to work with them. 
and I have another method down here called query uh, layer view and it uh, returns a function so I have this query features function available to use and the query layer view needs a layer view itself. This query layer view is basically going to take the current extent of my view, query the features on the layer view, and then return those features because I only care about the features actually um, displayed in my view uh, at the moment. I don't care about all the features. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, watch for when uh, the view stationary changes on the store and if it's not updating, so if if the layer view is currently updating, it only updates uh, the first time for right now in the JavaScript API. Uh, it initially starts as true because it's getting data, so it is updating. When it's false, so I have a nice little when false helper from the watch utils here. When that's false, I can go ahead and run my query features uh, method here. And if it's not, if the layer view is not updating, but my I'm not my stationary has changed, I just want to query the features now. Uh, from my current extent, because that means that my extent's changed at this point. So when I query the features, I'm going to get my results, all the different graphics. I have an array of graphics here, which I'm defining here as my results. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a copy of that stats I had up here. So that's initialized everything with a count of zero. And then I'm just going to uh, go ahead and iterate over those results and then look for the attributes that match what I want and update the values on that stats object that I have. Remember, I started at zero, so I'll just increment them by one every time I find uh, a value that matches. And then I'll update the accessor's um, properties that I have on my view model. I'll update the count and I'll update the stats. And uh, I can still use a set method on the accessor to update multiple um, values at the same time instead of doing this dot count equals results dot length and this dot stats equals underscore stats. I can just set them both at the same time this way. And then when I update this, uh, the, the values on my view model, uh, remember we bound those values on our widget at, with the alias of to match values on our uh, the widget itself. So count is equal to view model dot count. And when that gets updated, we said it's going to be renderable. So that means that I can go ahead and re-render my page here. It'll run over the stats again, get that the values have been updated, and then update the CSS here. And I won't bother showing the CSS. It basically just defines the colors and stuff. Uh, but when it happens, that's why I'm able to go ahead and pan my map and update this chart in here. So I'm not using any charting library. This is all just a very simple uh, way to be able to pull the charts and do some pretty cool stuff uh, with the API. So that is basically a sample of how you can create your own widget with the JavaScript API. Um, like I said before, uh, a lot of the details that I didn't cover are covered inside the guide for widget development. Um, look over the API references. Uh, I especially recommend looking over items such as implementing Accessor. This is uh, probably critical to uh, creating the widgets and the view models that you might want to use. Uh, and critical for a lot of development that you might want to do with the uh, four, version 4 of the JavaScript API. And then check out this uh, custom uh, widget that they provide as well uh, to show how to do a bunch of stuff. It's really neat and gives you a pretty good idea of how you might want to build out your widget. And that's it. Enjoy. Thank you.